The Feathered Historical Society have paid a special tribute by tracing the Tipperary connection of one of Australia's legendary outlaws, Ned Kelly. A phrase Australians still love to use is game as Ned Kelly. To this day, Ned Kelly is the national folk hero of this massive country. Son of an Irish convict, he was leader of the famous Kelly gang, who took to the bush after a series of clashes with the police. Kelly was a reckless and daring outlaw who saw himself as a victim of injustice and rebelled against oppressive authority. His bold exploits led to his execution in Melbourne jail when he was just 25 years old. Stories of this wild colonial boy lived after him and he became known as the King of Australia. What isn't so well known is Ned Kelly's Irish background. Now, here in Tipperary, the Feathered Historical Society have paid tribute to Australia's bicentennial by tracing the history of the Kelly family back home. Months of painstaking research have uncovered fascinating new information, including the birthplace of his father, John. We're now in the town of Combrogan, which is about a mile from the centre of my glass, which is where the church was. And this is the exact spot where John Kelly was born. We know that because uh, in the records of 1850, which is a Griffith valuation, there is a record of a Thomas Kelly owning uh, about three-eighths of an acre here in this exact spot. Now, there was only one Thomas Kelly in, the, in Clumbrogan, so this was the father of John Kelly. John Kelly was banished to Van Diemen's Land in 1841 for the theft of two pigs. He was 21 years old. This was the scene of the crime. Well, now we're in Ballysheehan. We've come from Clanbrogan, which is about five or six miles from this place. And this is the place where John Kelly stole the pigs in December of 1840. So he stole the pigs here, two pigs, value six pounds, from a, a person called James Cooney, who lived here. And then he drove the pigs, I got them somewhere in a cart or somehow to Care Mart, which, and he sold them there. And he ended up down in Carrick and Shure, in fact, the pigs. But they got the pigs back. The pigs were located by the police, and they, they got, he, they, so Cooney got his pigs back. But they didn't seem... <laughs> so that is, the, that is the basic story. And you have a record of that police report? Oh, we have, we have the, ex the exact record of that police report. I mean, the actual report, I saw it, yeah. It's in Dublin, in the State Paper Office in Dublin Castle. Yeah. And we, and we saw also the site of the, the original police barracks. That's right. Um, that's New, it was known then as New Park Police Barracks. Now it's a, now it's a private home near Douala. The Quinlan family live in it. And um, it was from there that the police came after him. It was reported there. The crime was reported by Mary Cooney. And uh, the police followed him and they arrested him in a lodging house in Cashel while he was spending his money after selling the pigs. And then John Kelly was tried uh, in, Cash in, Ca in Cashel, yes, Cashel Court, in January, in the 7th of January in 1841. All of this new information has generated a fresh wave of interest in the Kellys. Many locals went on conducted tours to the areas of interest over the weekend. And there were visitors from Australia too, among them an expert on Ned Kelly. I think that Ned was brought up in a, in a kind of Irish subculture in northeastern Victoria. Most of their neighbours, their selector friends, were Irish. About 85% uh, of the gang, the, 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 the greeter mob uh, which uh, Ned led, were uh, the, the sons of Irish-born uh, Indeed, these, farmers. This, this Kelly gang, they, they had a certain reckless, a Celtic reckless bravery about them, didn't they? Um, do you think this made them into rebel heroes and endeared them to Australians as a result? I think there are two sets of factors. I think there are the immediate factors, the immediate economic and social factors that uh, conditioned them as the, the sons of uh, unsuccessful small farmers. They, they were uh, the, the fruit of disillusionment in the 1860s and 1870s. So uh, certainly local conditions are very important. They certainly also were, to an extent, uh, 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 treated by the police as, as, as their natural game. They were, they were sought out. They were given a hard time by the police. Uh, on the other hand, they did seek out. They did seek to be lawbreakers. They gloried in uh, being put in jail, uh, being arrested, because they, they could boast uh, to their friends. The, the greeter mob were proud of their uh, antisocial behavior. There was an antisocial ethos to which they belonged. Now, to some extent, it was the product of local circumstances. To some extent, it was part of the, the Irish uh, inheritance, if you like, because 85% of the greeter mob were the sons of Irish-born settlers. So there was a continuity. The 150-year-old feathered mill is now home to the newly opened Abbey Mill Theatre. 
It currently houses an exhibition on the history of the Kelly family. Copies of all the records of events were on display, including a sketch of St. Francis Church in Melbourne, where John Kelly married Ellen Quinn from Antrim in 1850. Later, people packed the theatre to hear talks on the Kellys. The Fleming family had a special interest in being there. Related to Dan Kelly, who was a brother of uh, Ned Kelly's father. So that's how we found out. Were you surprised when you heard the news? Very surprised. I didn't think anything like that would ever happen. You know what I mean. Do you have any idea that you might have been related? You heard rumours, maybe? Oh, we heard rumours long ago. You know, but I mean, it's only now that it's really coming to light. During the lectures, the audience were treated to a blow-by-blow -blow account of the Kelly saga. The tale of the two pigs is chapter one of a great Irish-Australian legend. And for a few moments in the Abbey Mill Theatre in Feathered, a delighted audience were able to relive the event vividly. Today, Australians still reenact Ned Kelly's last stand in Glen Rowan in 1880. There was a wave of civil unrest there at the time, and Kelly was a wanted man for the killing of three policemen at the Battle of Stringyback Creek. All of his gang perished in Glen Rowan, and he was captured and later hanged. Rightly or wrongly, his performance at the last stand entered folklore and has made him a national hero. The son of a convict from Moy Glass is still very much a wanted man in Australia today. And that report by Theresa Mannion.